Well, the $47 billion office sharing giant WeWork plans to buy its own buildings rather than sublease other people's. This is part of a new plan. The company will set up a separate fund to buy all the commercial property, but it still presents a pretty huge shift in strategy for the business. It seems office sharing isn't going anywhere if you go by this. In fact, it could become a huge and direct influence on the global property market when it comes to office space. For tonight's Taking Stock, we're joined by Alex Bikovic. He's news editor at Business Insider Australia. And Richard Miles is with us. He's Pro Vice Chancellor at the University of Sydney. Great to see you both. Thank you very much. Um, and Business Insider has certainly been on this topic today. An interesting yeah, one. Absolutely. Because it is quite a big shift and there's a lot of focus given the, the listing. That's for, right. For, for, for the, the, the listing well. that we work is saying we're not Uber, and, uh, That's and right. we don't we're want those different. sort of Uber headlines. Yes. Yeah. Um, look, it, it, this is a story that um, you know my colleagues over at Business Insider in the states put up, and they did a fairly um, in-depth interview with the founder just in the last week. Um, and you know, it is really interesting and a sign of maturity that this co-working space is now getting into the actual serious game of being a property owner. Um, but at the same time, I don't think we should be that surprised. I mean, people are saying, oh, you know, this is so weird a co-working space becoming a you know a property owner I mean they very much are in the business of commercial property um, to begin with and I think it's a really um, interesting sign of how these co-working spaces have been able to market themselves because you know in some ways um, they've been able to present themselves almost as wellness companies first and foremost um, and sort of property companies second you know and they're, they're all about um, you know incorporating um, you know the for the greater good yeah the greater good and, and <laughs> yes. cutting-edge design and all about the latest research on how people are, uh, and, and not to be overly cynical about it, because I've been to some of these spaces, including in New York, and some of them are amazing. I mean, I went into one called The Assemblage, which is a competitor to WeWork, and you take a, uh, a little affirmation on your way in. The walls are all covered in moss, which you know reflects their green philosophy. Uh, you can book in for Kundalini Yoga, and it's like being oh God, like uh, a at, at a retreat, you know? Like a weird cult. I've got to ask you, does anyone get any work done in these places? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Do you know, they sound like like business class lounge. A bit like university, like, eh? <laughs> yeah. You start on that. Okay. You've always had an anti university event to where you've been. That's yeah. right. Yeah. University yeah. of Sydney graduate myself. Let me check know? out on your degree and see why you're so good at uh, yeah, it. wasn't a good turn up rate. But anyway, but seriously, I mean, these places, I've never seen anyone doing any work in co working spaces. Yeah, and yeah. some people are saying it's a real, you know, it's a very um, of this time thing that's going on. And I think some people are also saying, look, it's great when things are going well, but in a down economy, is this going to be something that's even still around? I think that is one of those well, questions yeah. that keeps And it's completely dependent on the housing market itself, right? I mean, you know, th their, their margins are only as fat as, you know, they're able to get the properties for if they're now going to yes. be property uh, owners or, or, or um, you know, or what their rents cost. So, mm. you know, I think um, th there is kind of a hard-nosed hard business edge to this yeah, as well. But this, all, this moss on the wall, I mean, I had a student <laughs> digs that were a bit like that. What's so special about <laughs> no, yeah, not my choice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Okay. Yeah. Or I get you now. Okay. <laughs> Some really expensive landscaper actually gets paid to put that in, actually. Oh Very expensive, I'm sure. It's Sheree Barber, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, it could have been. But to your point, I think it's pretty interesting. You could argue that this is pretty much handcuffed to the entrepreneurialism boom and the startup boom that mm. we're kind of seeing around the world. In a way, would you argue that it's kind of like setting up and, and having a really big boom in a mining town? Uh, and then all of a sudden, if things start to change a little bit, if yeah. the economy does turn, are you kind of uh, left out on a shag on a rock? You know? Well, perhaps that's why they want to actually own properties well, yeah. because you can so convert them into whatever else thing, is profitable, right? Yeah. And so. what is the guts of why they say they're not the Airbnb and they're not Uber? Mm. What's the guts of yeah, why Yeah, well, I mean, I guess, they, uh, and I guess they're not, you know, technology companies in the same way. So, yeah, you know, and, and that's why they're trying to get into bricks and mortar, interestingly, the same way that Amazon is. Mm. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's just good diversification. Yeah diversification but also sort of orthodoxy isn't it it's a sort of you know you're never going to lose money from property yeah, that's down, right. so basically Devil your fancy that's tech stuff, most, but yeah exactly yeah. so i get it it's, it's back to the future really oh, it's yeah. yeah very yeah. interesting well also we've seen facebook mm. announcing some new live streaming rules which has had a lot of coverage uh, this is all under effect as of today we understand this new policy um has come out which basically would say in the event say that you had the christchurch gunman uh, sharing that video that live video he would have had not actually been able to share footage of that attack on the platform. I guess a lot of people are worried these rule changes don't go far enough. Um, can it do more? Is this some kind of permanent mm. solution? Uh, what did you think of the changes, Richard? Well, I think this needed to happen. I mean, it was truly horrific, wasn't it? What, you know, mm. him being able to live stream all this thing. <clears throat> but in the end, are they really going to be able to control all this thing around streaming? I'm not sure. 
you know, you create a platform, a powerful platform like that, people often find a way in which to sort of yeah. present mm. this stuff. Mm. We've had some pretty smart people on this show say all of the reasons why Facebook actually can't really properly control mm. its platform. But what do you think? Step in the right direction here? Yeah, look, I mean, I, you know, in the scheme of penalties that you can issue out for things that are dangerous, so, you know, a, a ban from Facebook Live 30 for 30 days, days is, yeah. you know, days. you're allowed to go back. Yeah. They're hardly kicking them off the platform. Yeah. Um, but look, I think for me, they're doing something about it. And they're clearly, you know, Nick Clegg, I've seen, is in overdrive now. He's, uh, of course, the uh, former uh, uh, leader of the Liberal Democrats in the UK yeah. that Facebook hired at the end of last year. Mate of yours, Dicky, oh, you guys can see you rolling <laughs> your eyes at the end of the panel there. But he, and this is what you do when you're a failed politician, right? You can pick up some <laughs> massive job, right? Yeah. I mean, what has he got? You know, what qualifications has he got uh, to do much. that job? Well, mate? he was very wishy washy, wasn't he? I mean, as a politician, he was trying to play both sides Mass very much. Yeah. Um, he ended up posh, right? being yeah. in, uh, yeah. he was in coalition yeah. with, with, with the, the Conservatives and so on. Um, but, you know, he's out there on the front foot saying, at least we're out there talking to governments. And I think there is an element of that. Whether this is the right solution, I'm I mean, I probably defer to the, the technology experts who can, who can sort of work yeah. out what else um, can be in play. But I think what's really interesting is just how they are not, what they're not doing is um, the old defense of we're an innovative company, you know, don't stifle us, don't regulate us. You're not hearing that at all. Yeah. Um, and so they very much are talking about how they can be part of the solution and they're, you know, flying Jacinda Ardern over or she's flying herself. I don't know the, uh, yeah. you know, the nuts and bolts, but they're, yeah. they're talking to the, um, global leaders that are making noises on this and I think that's probably the right thing for them to be doing. Yeah, they, um, they, the experts have been saying that it's really a moderation issue, that, that there's so many eyeballs you need to have on the screens at all times and it's just a, a miserable job. It's so hard to get people to do it. But I do mm -hmm. think it was interesting your point about Jacinda Ardern who's been, you know, vocal the whole way through this and she's saying I've had good ongoing communication with Facebook, picked up the phone a couple of times, spoken to Mark Zuckerberg uh, who's obviously trying to get uh, on the front foot with this sort of thing. Do you think that uh, Jacinda Ardern's uh, commentary has been kind of consistent the whole way through. Do you, do you like what she's been saying? Yeah, I think I do like what she's been saying. I think the thing about, I mean, Zuckerberg's got had such bad press recently. Mm. When you think about it, I mean, people are really going after him, mm. aren't they? Um, Absolutely. And so I'm not surprised he's trying to get on the front foot in some mm. sort of way. But having Nick Clegg getting on the front foot for you? No, I think, so I sure think, about I think that. Jacinda Ardern's I mean, going to help him trend a lot better than, uh, than oh, Nick Clegg will. Yeah, yeah. he better she's, <laughs> hitch his wagon there. I that's think, right. Yeah, I mean, she's, sure she's trending heavily, isn't she? And now, of course, yeah. uh, as we reported on Business Insider, picking a fight with the NRA um, and, and saying that, you know, yeah. she doesn't understand why the US can't just change she its gun laws. So it's that kind of like, oh, I don't understand why you're doing this. Yeah. It's just like, oh, really? You because don't understand that? Well, oh, saying what every well. other citizen outside of the United States has said. Yeah. But not many global yeah, leaders, especially time. not ones that totally. have an ANZUS treaty in place. You know, yes. Um, so, well, yeah, you know. exactly. And being able to point to a track record of, of New Zealand and Australia's uh, reaction to, to horrible crime. I mean, like in this. terms of political spin, it's, it's a pretty out there, mm. uh, you know, honest mm. comment. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, I don't think too many New Zealanders would disagree with it um, based on, you know, that issue. And I think, um, you know, it's maybe smart politics domestically. There was one other thing in that announcement, as well as the 30-day um, the ban thing, they said they're going to invest $7.5 million in an effort to sharpen video detection strategies. And I just thought, you know, <laughs> hello, $7 detector. billion dollars yeah, from exactly. Facebook. Exactly. Got it's like amazing, isn't it? $530 oh billion dollar market. It all sounds like half hearted doesn't it? Oh, exactly. So, yeah, um, there's obviously more to be done. And as you said, the tech guys can work out whether, <coughs> whether there can be more done. But it just seems like that's a, just a very first tiny baby step, you'd have to say. Oh, right. absolutely right. Yeah. Now, another story that got tongues wagging. Iconic Aussie brand RM yes. Williams is up for sale with minority shareholder Hugh Jackman. <laughs> you weren't expecting to hear his name thrown in. He's set to uh, share in as much as half a billion dollars should a deal eventuate. Now, this is obviously a very well-known Aussie brand. Uh, Hugh Jackman's in the mix, another well-known Aussie brand. Um, yeah, big story, this one, potentially. Yeah, look, I love R.M. Williams. I'm one of those typical uh, city dwellers <laughs> who, uh, you know, who forks <laughs> out for them and yeah. just feels a little bit closer to the land when you pull them on, you know. And I, and I do so oh. I do so in the full knowledge of how ridiculous <laughs> you, you sound and look sometimes when you do that. Um, I think what's, you know, this is really interesting, clearly, um, it is a big iconic brand. It's going to be a big um, process. Now, I mean, Goldman Sachs has been enlisted to find a buyer. So there's serious business to be done. And, you know, $500 million is being thrown around as the potential, uh, you know, price for the company. I think what's really interesting is who buys it and then what they do with it. Mm. Um, because the real, I think, um, gold of RM Williams is the fact that it's still manufactured in Australia and almost nothing else is. Mm. Um, that's what justifies the price tag. I think that's what makes it sexy in the foreign market.